Welcome, everyone. Uh, my name is Rachel Anderson, and I am thrilled to be talking to you today about teaching different uh, teaching with different learning styles. Um, I'm going to be closing the session time for questions. So um, as I work through this workshop, uh, jot them down, or you can type them in the chat box. Um, I have just to give you background information for me. I have homeschooled four children with very different learning styles and abilities. One of my sons is a very strong learner. I have an average learner, albeit a little bit lazy. <laughs> and I have two kids who have learning differences and learning challenges. Over the years, I have learned to adapt lessons to meet their specific needs. So before we get started, I want you to think about your children, just like, um, just like you want your children to learn and study well, you also need to study your kids. So let's get started. What are your kids' strengths? What are their struggles? How do they learn best? Now, this is not a question of how you prefer to teach but rather how your child learns best. Sometimes we don't realize that our instructional methods are more focused on us and our preferences other than the, what our children need. Each child is unique, and it is extremely important that we adjust our instruction to meet their needs. Some students learn quickly, while others require a lot of extra practice and review, and, you know, that changes between subject to subject. Sometimes they need more practice in math and reading goes well or vice versa. Some students have a strong auditory ability, so they find it easier to learn when they hear the content. Is anybody out there an auditory learner? I am a decently strong auditory learner. Others have strong visual abilities, so they find it easier to learn when they see or read something. So that would be my absolute strength for me. Anybody else out there? Other students are strong with their kinesthetic abilities, and they prefer to learn by doing things um, hands-on, using hands-on activities. Um, anybody else in that category? Well, recent studies have actually shown that though a child might be strong in one sensory ability, they benefit most when all three learning styles are applied to content. And this is called multisensory learning. Multisensory learning is a whole brain learning option, uh, whole brain learning. It activates different parts of the brain, which promotes learning and retention. Multisensory learning. Um, is particularly beneficial for students who learn or think differently. I have, as I mentioned before, I have two kids who have learning difficulties and differences. And when they read material, that content doesn't stick. And when they hear me just lecture to them or read to them, they don't exactly remember what I said. Although sometimes I wonder how much of it is intentional <laughs> memory loss. I don't know what you just said, mom. <laughs> but anyway, however, when I incorporate a combination of seeing, hearing, and doing a lesson, they learn better and they retain the material so much better. Today, I'm going to share with you some examples of how Right Start Math incorporates visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learning opportunities into your child's math lesson. Now, if you're not familiar with Right Start Math, it is an award-winning math curriculum that engages the student and teaches them in such a way that they can understand. So let's start by talking about math facts. Is anybody out there going, getting a, a stomach ache thinking about math facts? Math facts is not a fun thing to learn, is it? We were stressed out about it as we were learning them. Our culture is really, really big into having our children learn math facts through rote memorization, right? Remember sitting at the desk and remember memorizing one math fact family after another, another math fact family? This method is often used to help them practice and um, learn their math facts by working through worksheets, right? We were given worksheets and then we were given more worksheets and then more worksheets and more and more and more to practice and learn math facts. When um, you may do this with your child too. Math, worksheets is a very commonly used method of practice, isn't it? 
But when our child or when we get tired of the worksheets, we flip it on over to flashcards. We're going to change it up. We're going to make it look prettier, right? So we move from worksheets into um, flashcards. Then to see how well our children are learning and make sure they're retaining the information, we do this thing called timed tests. And if they're not fast enough, you know what we do. We make them practice more by giving them more worksheets and more flashcards, don't we? There is a better way. Um, unfortunately, this method of teaching has created a generation of people who have developed math phobias and anxiety. And if I could see all of your faces, I would actually have you raise your hand. Is anybody out there listening who has math anxiety or math phobias? I would venture to say that several of you do. When I work conventions and meet moms and dads who have math anxiety, I often ask them what they think the root of their anxiety is. And almost all of them say it's because of the timed tests and flashcards. The other ones usually say because they were loaded up with worksheets that they were required to do, but there is a better way. Um, right Start Math will teach math facts without rote memorization. And they're going to create a fun and engaging way to learn those math facts. Now, um, I'm, one way that we practice in Right Start Math is through math card games. I'm not going to cover that idea because we had a, a workshop earlier on in this week that covered math card games. So I'm skipping that part, um, but I'm going to show you how Right Start Math uses various methods of teaching using visual, auditory, and kinesthetic learning to help your child understand and learn math facts without rote memorization. So let's start with very basics. Uh, what is that number? That's four. You know, that is just a symbol that represents a quantity, right? The quantity of four. So everybody, um, this is active. Even though I can't see you, I think you can do this. Um, everybody show me your four fingers, right? You did that automatically, right? Without counting, didn't you? You can easily recognize quantities up to five. So if I were to ask you how many this is, you see that right away. That's two. You didn't count that. You didn't go one, two. You saw that that was two. How about this? Three and one more, five. You can tell me immediately how many fingers are there without counting. This is called subitizing. Most children can subitize. So let's use this strength to help them learn their math facts. We're going to use the AL abacus to do that. That's one of the manipulatives Right Start Math uses to help kids learn. This is the AL abacus, also known as the Cotter abacus. The abacus provides your child with a fabulous visual of the abstract world of numbers. Notice that each row has five blue beads and five yellow beads. And this is done on purpose, intentionally. Also, I wanted to point out the rows, their first five rows, are start with blue beads and the last five rows start with yellow beads. Again, very intentional. So how can you tell me, how does that work? You can tell me how many beads that is, right? You can see that that is three. Did you need to count them? No, you just saw that, right? Just like you could see this is three. You can see that is three. How about now? And how about now? You can see the five blue beads and two yellow beads, which is seven. You see these quantities right away without counting. So what if I were to show you a group of items um, that is all one color, greater than five that is. I want you to tell me, I'm gonna show you some apples actually, and I want you to tell me how many you think there are, but you cannot count and you cannot group. Okay, are you ready? Here we go. You're not cheating, are you? <laughs> How many do you think there were? Are you sure about it? Do you know for certain? Or did you cheat and count? <laughs> but what if I group them? If I group them in colors, you see immediately that there are eight apples. You are confident with that answer. It's not a guess. You know for sure. That's what grouping does. So let's build on this skill to help your children visualize and learn their math facts without rote memorization, worksheets, and flashcards. So let's start back at the AL abacus. How many beads is this again? Five. What if I had a second row of five? How many are there now? 10, right? 
That's easy to see. When I was in first grade, I really, really struggled with eight plus seven. I just couldn't get into my head. So let's put that on the abacus. Let's see what that looks like. The eight is going on top and the seven will go on the bottom. All right, so do you see this 10? How many yellow beets are there? Five more. So eight plus seven is 10 plus five, which is 15. How easy is that? You know, I have a son who has low working memory. Um, he literally could not memorize things, spelling words, oh my goodness, uh, math facts, never mind that. Um, however, when he was asked basic addition math facts, he was able to solve them quickly and accurately. Now, let me remind you, he could not memorize them. Instead, he would picture the abacus in his mind and tell me how many beads he saw on his mental abacus. You know, no one, but he and I knew that he did not have these memorized or, or at least wrote memorized. Interesting though, um, he was more accurate and quicker than his peers who did memorize their math facts. Why? Because pictures don't lie. He could see it very clearly in his mind and kids who were counting on their fingers would sometimes get lost or it would take a long time. So let's say that, you know, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, fifth, eight, nine, 10. You know what I'm talking about? You've seen kids do that, right? It takes longer and it's not always accurate. The abacus provides visual and kinesthetic opportunities for your child to learn. By the way, auditory learning is also used, but in a much more subtle way. When I would ask my child what eight plus seven was, he would say eight plus seven is 15. Now, I had him say the entire equation out loud. That is auditory learning. One more thing. When your child says that full math fact, not just the answer, but the full math fact, they learn so much better than if you, as a parent, were to just say the math fact to them. So when they hear their own voice, they're actually using two different parts of the brain promoting a stronger learning experience. Place value. So let's talk about right start math and how they teach place value in such a way that utilizes different learning techniques to help your students learn regardless of their learning styles. So if you're not familiar with place value, um, it's basically the organization of quantities into groups. So let's take a look at this number. This number, 658. Can you tell me, tell me how many hundreds there are in this number? There are six. How many tens are in this number? Five. How many ones are in this number? Eight. And while this might seem straightforward to us as an adult, for children, this idea can be a bit confusing. And this confusion is brought about because of the English language. Let me explain. When a child learns to count to 100, they have to learn all kinds of words and say them in the correct order. It starts off really easy. They learn the first 10 words, right? It starts off with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's not too bad, is it? Then we say, okay, let's learn the next segment, right? 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Now, what's interesting is these numbers, for the most part, do not sound at all like the first group. 11 doesn't sound like one at all. Now, you will hear some hints like 14, 4, you hear that, but 15, that's not like 5, is it? So they don't hear that. Then we make them memorize the next set of words, right? 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Now they're starting to hear words that they've heard before in the same order, right? Then we have them learn the next set, 31, 32, 33, and so forth. And now they're starting to see the pattern. You know what I mean? You've heard it and you've done it. 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and so forth, right? Children have a hard time understanding place value because they don't hear the names of the numbers, especially in those quirky numbers like 11 and 12. So Right Start Math has the child to temporarily, temporarily, yep, 
temporarily, so don't freak out, temporarily learn the math way of saying numbers, also known as the transparent number naming. Basically, it calls the number by its place value. So let me count that for you. So the first part is very similar. It's very, it's just like the first, um, the regular way of saying numbers, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Then we get into tens, right? 10, 10, one, 10, two, 10, three. We're talking the place value. We could even say one, 10, one. So we're saying how many, how many uh, tens there are in the tens place? One, 10, one, one, 10, two, 10, three, 10, four, 10, five, 10, six, 10, seven, 10, eight, 10, and nine. 210. And then we go all the way up through 9109. Now, many Asian languages have place value built into their language. So, for example, if they're saying the number 11, they're actually saying 1101. And that's why many Asian countries or children from Asian countries do so much better understanding the place value, much better than the children in the United States. The sad fact is is uh, most children or, or half the children at the end of fourth grade still do not know place value. As a result, they struggle in knowing how and when to carry, borrow, and trade. They don't see the patterns in numbers to make learning more intuitive. Instead, they make everything a memorized process, and this process doesn't make sense to them. However, when children hear and learn numbers the math way, they absolutely know for certain, how many ones, how many tens, how many hundreds are in a number because it's spoken, nothing's hidden. The abstract is removed. So let's go back to this number, 658. But this time, let's call it um, the math way of saying this number. We're gonna say 600, 5, 10, eight. Now, if I were to ask a child who has not had a lot of experience with place value, how many tens there are in 600, 5, 10, 8, they are more likely to say five because it's in the name. By the way, this is auditory learning. As children are learning to say numbers the math way, they are building the numbers um, using place value cards. So we're adding another layer in. So let's try that for the number 658. We're going to start by getting the 600 card, the 600 place value card. And then we're going to get the 510 card. And then we're going to get the eight card. And then we're going to line it up so that they're lined up on the right. And it shows 600, 510, eight. Now here's a side note. For children with dyscalculia and dyslexia, um, those kids who have a tendency to flip their numbers around, like write their five backwards, or maybe even flip the digits together. So it'd be like in this number, 608, five, they flip the eight and the five. Using place value cards is a huge benefit for them. They not only learn their numbers, they um, know how to write them. So when they cut, what, what happens is the process is, is the child will build the number on place value cards and then they will copy that answer onto their paper. Now, for my family, this was a real game changer for us. Uh, one more thought on that. Right Start Math uses more than 20 manipulatives in the curriculum. So you may find that one or two manipulatives really, really work well for your child, but it's just not listed in the lesson. So what? Use it anyway. Just because it's not listed in the manual does not mean that you can't use it. As I said before, my son did very well using place value cards. So we use them every single time he, need, he needed to write down numbers. So feel free to bring in additional manipulatives to a lesson if it will help your child learn. Now, that being said, be sure to use them as they're designed. For example, don't give your child the calculator when they're solving problems on a worksheet, right? Okay, so common sense there. Make sure you're using them as they're designed to encourage your child to learn. Okay, so I love place value cards. Um, and here's another reason why. What happens if I were to ask a child to write the number 108? What two numbers do they hear? They hear the 100 and they hear the 8. So what are they going to write? What do you think they're going to write? Yeah, they're going to write 18, right? Because they only hear the one 
and they hear the eight. They don't hear the zero tens, so they don't write it down. However, when they're using place value cards, they put the 100, they pull out the 100 card and the eight card, they put them together, they line them up, and they see 100, zero tens, eight. Now, when I did act activities like this, I like to bring in some discussion with my kids. So when I saw something like this, I would say, wait a minute, I don't hear a zero in that number, 108. Why is there a zero in there? And I want, I want to pull that information from my child. Let them think about it for a minute. Why? Oh, because there are no tens. There's a zero 10, right? So that's why the zero goes in there. Let them discover this. Now, some kids with um, special needs or um, have learning struggles, you might need to kind of share that information, kind of uh, explicit information, uh, instruct them on that to understand why that zero is there, help them understand that, grasp that. But anyway, use the opportunity to bring a conversation in, even if it's not in the lesson manual, pull, uh, make time for that, pull that information out, let them think about it, let them ponder it. By the way, place value cards, this activity was a visual learning and a kinesthetic learning. And one more cool activity that Right Start Math uses, has the child use um, the place value cards for is they're going to pull out one card for each place. So they're going to pull out the three, the 310, the 300, and the 3000 card. Then they're going to have the child point to each digit and say its name. And it's going to look something like this. Three, one digit, one syllable, 310. Two digits, how many syllables? Two, isn't that cool? 300, three syllables, three digits. Now the thousands don't cooperate, so we modify it just a little bit. Three thousand, four digits, four sound segments. Now I used to tell my kids all the time that the only time they're allowed to stick their tongue out at me was when we're talking place value, <laughs> when we do the right? So they thought that was really funny. So they over exaggerated the, and they really stuck their tongue out, um, trying to get, trying to stick their tongue out at me. Um, by the way, that made us all laugh. And it was, they, they had a giggling note, uh, a giggling time for that. But I'm going to say that to the, on the side, make sure that as you're teaching math and any other subject, add fun and laughter to the lesson. Not only does it help kids stay engaged, but they're going to enjoy the learning process and uh, you will too, actually. So by the way, using this activity, we're doing um, visual, kinesthetic and auditory methods of learning. It is important that regardless of the subject that you're teaching, that you engage your child in multisensory learning by incorporating visual, auditory and kinesthetic components to the lesson. Right Start Math um, uses multisensory um, and it makes multisensory teaching very easy. This is an open, go, open and go type of a program. I literally pulled the book off the shelf, found the lesson, pulled the um, manipulatives for the day. Actually, I made my kids go get their <laughs> manipulatives. I'd say, McKenna, can you go get the abacus and place value cards and while I'm opening up my book? Um, but anyway, as you're reading through, I just pull the book out, get the manipulatives, start reading. There are tons of pictures, so you know what the materials are supposed to look like and how they progress throughout the activity. Each lesson includes auditory, visual, and kinesthetic instructions, so you don't need to add anything, unless, of course, you want to. Right Start Math is a complete math program that will help your child learn, understand, and apply and enjoy math. If you would like uh, more information about Right Start Math, there is our website, rightstartmath.com. Uh, check it out. Check out our website. There are helpful videos, blogs, placement tests, um, product information that will help you see how this program works and what you will need to get started. Uh, you can also contact us by phone. Our phone number is there. And, um, or you can contact us by email. Our email is there for more specific questions that you might have and how it might work for your particular family. I just want to thank you for spending your afternoon or morning, depending on what time zone you're in, uh, with me. I'm going to open it up for some questions here in just a second. Um, but if you prefer to log off now, thank you so much for joining me and have a great day. Does anybody have any questions?
You can either unmute and ask your question, or if you prefer, you can type it in the chat box. I don't see the chat box, Kathleen. Do you? Uh, is anybody? Yep, I can. I can see it, and so far we have no questions. Okay. Oh, I see it here. I pull it up. Okay. Well, well if nobody we has any questions, go ahead. No, I was just going to say if we don't have any questions, if anyone wants to do anything, we've got uh, Rachel's information, and you can certainly give give a. a uh, give us a contact us. Um, Jenny is saying th thank you so much, Rachel. I have to run to teach on a one o'clock class, but I really appreciate your time. Thanks, Jenny. Okay. Well, if nobody has any questions, feel free to contact us by email or phone or check out our website. Have a really good day, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>